Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down there in the right hand corner. Click the notification bell down there by the title of this video and that way you are notified of all future videos that I upload. So today, I am going to talk about what to do when you finish a painting. Now all of what I'm going to tell you is going to apply to whatever painting that you have completed, whether it is a shipper or if it's on a canvas. So basically in this video, I'm going to show you how to seal this triptych and I'm also going to show you how to frame this triptych that I've been working on. And even though this is a shipper painting, I'm going to give you framing tips for how to frame your piece, no matter what kind of painting it is. And I'm also going to show you how to seal your piece if you're using a liquid varnish. I also have an alternative for a spray type of sealant. My problem is that the spray sealants are very strong in odor and I cannot use the spray sealants because of my migraines. One of my main triggers is sensitivity to strong odors and I will give you a couple of options for nice spray sealers but I'm not going to show you how they work because I cannot use them myself so I'm going to use the varnish that I like to use personally and that is the one that I brought to you in the past which is the shipper varnish this is called a final lacquer and it leaves such a beautiful finish on my piece I'm going to go ahead and jump right in so that we can get started. There's a lot of information in this video, so let's roll. Okay, now first things first. What you're gonna notice is a painting that you've seen a couple of times in my videos, but you're also gonna notice an unfinished panel. Welcome to the world of Melanie B and her unfinished projects. This piece was started in March of 2022, and it is a shipper triptych. And you might remember when I brought this to you and introduced it to you back in the fall, I believe it was, of 2021. It is fabulous. Then I brought it back to you in the spring of 2022 when I taught you the flow method. And that is what I've been doing to paint this piece. So I'm enjoying thoroughly the flow technique. It has made this painting go so much faster and it has given it a beautiful dimension. The reason these panels are not completed is because I have very little time for myself to actually work on my hobbies. But this is the piece that I'm gonna show you how to frame and seal. Let me talk about the spray sealer that I am gonna recommend for you guys and why I'm gonna recommend it if you prefer a spray type of sealer. This is by Krylon and this is a satin finish. They also have it available in a glossy and a matte finish. And the reason I prefer this one is because it is non-yellowing. So over time, it's not gonna yellow in light. And it also has a moisture resistant coating. It's permanent, it's protective, and it's designed to be UV protective as well. So lighting won't really affect it over the years. It does have that very strong odor that we talked about, but you're gonna use this one outside. And you can hear the activator ball inside, so you're gonna make sure you shake this up very well, follow the instructions on the can, and be sure that you put something underneath your project, but make sure you spray it evenly on a non-windy day, on a non-humid day, but you would wanna leave it outside and allow it to dry. One of the reasons that I haven't brought you a video using the spray sealant because several factors. I live in a very humid environment. It's hard for me to set up outside and because the odor is so strong, I have to be careful when I use a product like this. There's also a Grumbacher brand that is UV protectant and is also very much recommended by artists for sealing your paintings. Now, another big question I'm asked all the time is, do you really have to seal an acrylic painting? No, you don't. 
For years, I discussed this in videos as whether you have to seal them or not. And what I finally decided was I am going to start sealing my pieces because once I am dead and gone, I don't know whose hands are going to be in and I'm not sure how they're going to take care of my projects. So whether they care for them the same way I'm going to care for them is going to make a difference. So what I decided is even though acrylic paints are very hardy, they can hold up just, you know, light and moisture a lot better than other art mediums like watercolor, especially. And we don't have to put glass on an acrylic painting. I thought it was best for me to seal my pieces. It does not mean you have to. So for those of you who do not want to, you do not have to seal your paintings. I'm just doing it for an extra level of protection to prevent humidity because I do live in a humid environment. I'm doing it for that reason. And just because I don't know who will get this in the future. I also have grandchildren and I will probably end up having great grandchildren and great great grandchildren and what if they come along with some dirty hands at some point and this is laying down somewhere even if it's in a frame it doesn't have glass I don't know whose hands are going to be on it I don't know if it ends up in a garage somewhere in a thrift store and you know mold or mildew or something starts to grow well if it's got a sealant on it somebody could take something and wipe that off and this could look brand new again if I have sealed it properly so I'm considering all of those factors and that is why I'm going to be sealing my projects. Now the next question that a lot of people ask is how do you know whether to put a glossy or a satin or a matte finish on your piece? I personally prefer a satin or a glossy when there are vivid colors because it's going to make the colors pop. Now, if I have a muted piece and I feel like it is a very emotion invoking piece, I might would put a matte finish on there. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm gonna want a satin to a glossy finish. I've already sealed this panel down here with the lacquer from Shipper. And I will show you the difference. This one is unsealed because I'm gonna show you how to seal with the final lacquer during the video. So I left this one unsealed for me to demonstrate with. And I went ahead and added one layer of the final lacquer on this one. And you can see how beautiful the colors have popped. Now, as if they weren't beautiful already, they are more vibrant. That final lacquer has allowed this to not really be so glossy. It's not shiny. It is more of, I would consider this to be more of a satin finish. But when I get close, I can see the shine on it. But it is a beautiful finish. One of the things I love about applying the final lacquer is that as it dries, it goes into all of the little dips and the valleys of the three-dimensional flow technique and it allowed my three-dimensionality to remain. So I still have that texture that I added while I was applying the flow method. So it did not take that away. And so I'm very curious to see how that stays in here once I put that sealer on this particular one because this is where I added the most depth in the flow method. Now you have an option of doing one coat or two, but the first thing you want to remember is that if you're going to apply two layers, you want to do them 12 hours apart. For the video, I'm going to go ahead and frame this panel because there is no glass on this. It's not going to hurt this for me to go ahead and put this in that frame. And that way I can show you the assembly of the triptych frame for this panel. So next, I'm going to show you how to apply the lacquer on this panel. I'm going to get the tools out for us and we're going to get started. All right, so first, I wanna show you the few things that I have in front of me so that you'll know which tools you might need. To begin with, I have the box, <laughs> and I always keep everything in the box for the shipper varnish, the final lacquer, because it had a few components in it, and it's just easier to keep everything in this little handy box. And that includes the instructions, this little brush, and the bottle of final lacquer. Then I also have, my gesso application tool that I designed for applying gesso 
This is great for clear gesso, but it is also great for varnish. And in this case, I'm gonna be using it for the final lacquer. Then I have just a little cup, and you guys, you can use whatever you want to put the lacquer into. This is just a little container that's disposable, but I can also use it to pour back into my bottle because I never use as much as I think I'm gonna use, especially when I'm using this tool, which means less waste, so it's perfect. Then I also have one of the brand new stainless steel stirring tools that we just got over at the supply shop. One has an eighth of a teaspoon and the other one has a sixteenth of a teaspoon uh, for measuring. But really all I'm going to use this one for is just to get down in here and stir this. I don't want to shake it because I don't want to create bubbles or anything, but they do recommend that you stir this. Oh, and also very importantly, I have something to protect my surface. And this is just a Teflon sheet that I have for my Cricut heat press, but I usually use a silicone mat, but you can use newspaper or whatever you want to to protect your surface under your painting. Whether you're putting this on a canvas or a board, Remember that a board painting is gonna be sitting on the surface more than a canvas will be, but I have a trick for that. So I'm gonna show you that as well. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and just stir this up. It's not like glue, it's not like gesso, it is not coming off. So I'm gonna rinse all of my little tools as soon as I'm finished using them. What I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and just use this little cup and pour a little bit in here. And I'm gonna put the lid on this and just set it aside for now. Another little tip is that if you're working with a board and when you want to dry your board, one thing you can do, if you have the little cups that I showed you, you can turn them upside down like this and set your piece down to dry when you're done. And that way it doesn't stick to the surface that you have your project on while it's drying and then there's no paper or anything stuck to it if you're using newspaper or any of that and that just gives us a riser or a lift and actually I'm going to use a couple more because this is a little larger than the panel I was using yesterday so I'm just going to set these down here so that when I'm done I'll have a surface that's raised up to set it on for it to dry as I'm applying, I'm going to do it like I've always done my clear gesso. I'm going to be tilting and turning and looking in the light to make sure I have even coverage. Now this is a very liquid varnish and I should have mentioned it's water-based and you can dilute it. I don't need to dilute this. It's very thin already and I don't need to get a lot of it, but I'm going to just get some on the corner and I can start applying it and I'm going to apply it in a small area first and focus on that area and making sure I'm getting a smooth coverage. And I really don't want a lot of overlap, but the beauty of this little squeegee is that it gets down into the grooves. And with the flow technique, as I mentioned earlier, that's beautiful because it's gonna get down into that texture into the dips and the grooves that I have provided with that flow method. So, I'm gonna get a little bit more, very small amount at each time, and I'm gonna apply it with an angle so it's almost flat. And that is gonna be how I'm using this tool for applying the varnish. Now I'm gonna continue checking and moving to make sure I've got it all covered and that there's no thick spots until this entire surface is completed. You see that? All right, so let me keep going and I'm gonna time lapse from this point.
All right, so that literally took like four minutes <laughs> and very quick. And I'm gonna show you really quickly before I put this back, there's just a little bit left. Pretty proud of myself that I didn't pour way too much. I'm gonna go clean off my application tool, but first I'm gonna pour back the little bit of lacquer that is left in here. I mean, I can use this little cup over and over again as long as I keep it rinsed. I don't mind doing that while I'm cleaning my other tools and I can even scrape out that little bit of lacquer. This bottle I think was about $12 retail at Amazon. So of course I'm gonna send you to a link that will show you where to get the shipper lacquer. I'm gonna leave this here for just a few minutes. I'm going to pull out the other panel and one of the frames from the triptych box that I got from shipper and we're gonna start building that frame. But first I'm gonna to talk to you about how to choose a frame that is perfect for your painting, no matter what painting you have. So I'll be right back with that information. Okay, so I'm back and we're gonna talk frames for just a minute and I'm gonna to talk to you about how do we choose a frame for our painting. Now let's just pretend like I don't have a frame that is designed for my piece and I have this painting and I'm looking at it and I say, okay, what kind of frame do I need for this? How do I choose? Do I need a white frame? Do I need a black frame? How do I pick one? Do I need a brown frame? First of all, let me go ahead and tell you that I was a framing manager and did custom framing for two years. So I do have a background, <laughs> background in this. So for, you know, for those of you who don't know my background, that I absolutely loved custom framing. And there are a lot of tips that I can help you with in this area, no matter what you have to frame. I don't care what your project is, whether it is a photo, artwork, in this case, a paint by number. Three different things that you wanna replicate from your artwork. You either wanna replicate the color, you wanna replicate the texture, or you wanna replicate the pattern. And you can replicate two of those if you would like. So first and foremost, you're framing for your piece. You're not framing for your space. Now I'm gonna tell you that, and a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, their eyes are gonna twitch. My wall color may change. My room decor may change, but this artwork is not gonna change. You can make your frame coordinate for your space and the other frames in your space, but you don't want to frame your piece just to match a room that you may redecorate in five years because I'm gonna tell you, framing is expensive. And if you go to reframe a piece, you're gonna be like, why did I not frame for that piece? So the first thing we're gonna look at, what colors could we go with? Well, we have tons of colors in this piece, right? I might would say this light color would be beautiful on a blue wall. One of these other colors over here might be beautiful. So you've got choices of color. Because this is a dark piece in the background, if I put a dark frame, it can darken my piece up. If I put a light frame, because there's lightness in the center, it's going to brighten this piece and bring your eye to the center. But in this particular painting that I want this bird of paradise flower to be my focal point. If I choose a color here, the frame is gonna get lost with the artwork on the outside and it's gonna blend in too much. But if I choose a color in this area, it's going to pop that color and make it stand out. If color alone is not my best choice, let's move to texture. There's parrots in this main piece. This is a bird of paradise. Where would I find those things? A wooden frame screams to me. Immediately, that is where my mind has gone to this frame something maybe in a wood that has this color to it 
see this lightness up in here it's also in there too so a light wood would automatically kind of bring me in here but it also is going to replicate the vibe of my piece so we're going to put on a textured frame you wouldn't pick a wood that makes you think of the wilderness you would pick a frame that makes you feel like you're in the jungle so that's going to move me on to the pattern we have patterns here we have a lot of patterns going on now because we have a lot of patterns pattern may not be my first choice for repeating in my frame because then i can have too much going on to where i have so much busyness that my eye doesn't know where to settle when i look at my piece but let's just say that i have a frame that has a very light indentation almost like a leaf in it that replicates this fern frond in the back and then I've kind of pulled a few of these elements together. It fits the piece. And you see how that process works together. That is how I'd pick a frame for this piece. If the frame is too busy and I hold that piece up, then I would say, okay, take out the pattern and go with the color and leave it that way. So now we're down to what Shipper does for their frames. So going back to color, what we're going to do is we have two choices of color so they very much simplified this for us which is beautiful because i love the fact that i don't have to go through the color the texture and the pattern so we have a silver or a gold color i opted for the gold now i'm going to pull the main component the center piece of the panel for the parrots in the rainforest and we're going to look at that and i'm going to show you why you can see i have a lot of the oranges in here a lot of the yellows a lot of these reds in here so gold was the choice i even took an app and i put the silver and i put the gold frame on this piece before i chose one and i preferred the gold so that's what we're going to work with right now i'm going to show you how to assemble the frame for this panel of this triptych piece all right so when you buy one of the frames from Shipper. It comes with all of the components. So you're getting a frame for all three of the panels that are in a triptych. So the price includes all three of those. Now in my framing department, these frames were not cheap. So the price they give you is really phenomenal for the fact that they're giving you all three of these. And I realize there's no glass in this, but Have to make sure your artwork is not up against the glass if you don't have spacers then over time the humidity and the glass will cause it to stick together and then you're going to have a nightmare you remember those old magnetic photo albums that people used to have it was ripping the top layer of your photos off that is what happens if you put glass on artwork that hasn't been properly taken care of if there's not a space between we call it glazing but the acrylic or the glass then you have a problem if there's any humidity that gets between the glazing and your art okay so you have to have that space and it needs to be a pretty significant amount of space that's why we don't put glass it's better to have it and just air it out and expose it than it is to have it smashing on there you can wipe off a piece but if you don't know there's humidity behind it it's going to end up being stuck lecture 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 i'm all about preservation that's why i love framing that's why i love scrapbooking you know so in the package, you're gonna see, you've got your catalog of Yummy Deliciousness, which are all the kits they have available, and the, the other products they have, including the frames, the final lacquer, and other tools they have. Then we also have the frame components, 
which are going to include all of the ends that we need. And then we're going to have the tools and the hardware and the instructions, okay? But of course, I'm going to talk you through the instructions today. One thing I forgot to mention is you do need a screwdriver. I forgot to get that. That's one of the main components for today's tools. <laughs> so for this particular panel, I'm going to need one of the shortest ends and one of the middle sized ones. And I'm going to grab the tools. I'm going to set everything aside and grab a screwdriver and we're going to get started. Okay, I might be having a little bit of PTSD. <laughs> Flashbacks from the framing department. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with my framing department. Just kidding. <laughs> I loved framing. I really did. Um, and these were so easy to put together. So, <laughs> But I'm, I'm sitting here going, uh, the stress, the stress, <laughs> being on time crunches, you know, and all that junk. Anyway, okay, let me tell you what I have here. <laughs> so I have my ends laid out, and I'm going to explain how I have them laid out as I'm going. I also have these are what are going to hold your pieces in place and keep them from like warping over time or whatever. But I'm going to show you those. You'll see what those are in just a minute because this is a small panel. I'm going to have one on each of the short ends and two on each of the long ends. When you do the larger panel, you're going to have two of these for support and two on the long ends. Okay, so they'll explain that in the instructions, but for this video, I'm just doing the short panel for visibility purposes. And so I just wanna make sure I point that out. Then I also have the hanging hardware with the screw. And then I have four of the, I guess we're gonna call these L brackets. And then I have two of these kind of screws per bracket here, okay? Plus my handy dandy screwdriver. Now the way I have these laid out, this is the back of my frame. So when I put these together, this is how they're going to go. So I'm gonna start working in this corner. And then once I do this first corner, I will time lapse, because I'm losing my voice. And I'm gonna explain and walk through this corner. And then if I need to add notes while I'm time lapsing, I will do that on the screen to make sure if I've left out anything that was important or details, I can add those as I'm going. We want to go ahead and screw on this part, which is the hanging hardware. This is what we're gonna hang this from once it goes on the wall. So all this is gonna do is just slide into the bracket here on one of the short ends for the side panel. And then we have the little Phillips head screw that's gonna screw here and hold it in place. You would measure this to the center point and get it exactly to center if you want it to hang straight. Okay, so now that I have this, then I can go ahead and continue to assemble my corners. All right, so when you do the first corner, you're gonna slide this L bracket in just like this. You're gonna turn this one up and do the same here until they are flush against each other. And then you're gonna take your screw. We're gonna use a little flathead screwdriver unsuccessfully because we're on video. So let's get in here really closely so that my hands can get all up in the way. Don't wanna tighten these until we make sure that our corners are flush. At the point I'm at right now, let me show what we have. I have attached the brackets here and here, and I have these corners nice and, and pretty. And I have our hanging hardware centered as much as possible in the middle. Like I said, you will center that with your measuring tape or your ruler. And if you go to hang this and you find that it is not hanging exactly center, you can always unscrew that a little bit and adjust it and then tighten it back up. So you have some versatility with that. It's not permanent, okay? Now, what I need to do is insert my panel before I put the bottom on. So right now, I have these two parts screwed in right here. And once I get the panel in, all I have to do is slide these two in and screw them on, and I'm done with that part. Now, when I put the panel in, I have to be paying attention to what is the top and what is the bottom. <laughs> and the hanging part is up here, so we're gonna make sure we're inserting this from the direction we want it. 
and it's going to look like that. So let me attach this part. So I'm just going to slide that in there and then put these screws in. I'm gonna check the front and check those corners because I'm super OCD about having any kind of gaps there. That's perfection. If I didn't put these in, you see how, how much space and how much movement I would have? So that is why they give us these. Now, these things will take flight <laughs> if you're not paying attention. <laughs> so you want to, these are probably gonna break my fingernails, I'm just gonna tell you. You wanna take them and push them down and push them up under the edge completely and they should stay under there, okay? Put one on each side here and two on each side here and I will do that under time lapse. Now let's take a look at our beauty. It looks incredible. I'm so proud. Now, once the other piece, the center panel is finished curing, then I will get it framed as well. And then I will finish that third panel eventually and it will be done also. But I hope you guys found this video to be very helpful and answered a lot of questions about framing and sealing your piece. And I would love to get your feedback. So please, you guys, drop a comment below. Tell me what you think. And I hope to see you back soon with some more videos. I've been recording like crazy, but editing takes forever. So I apologize for the delay, but hang on because I promise I'll have some new content soon. Thank you as always for watching. And I will see you back soon.